Oh, hey there, THP 494 and 598. All right, so we just got finished looking at this particular example uh, in respect to generative design and some of the techniques included there. And now we're going to look at another kind of example. We're going to look at something uh, a little bit like this, right? So this example moves us from this really noisy distribution uh, to something that resembles something more like a circle and then back to this noisy distribution again. So this is another kind of idea that's going to uh, kind of explore what noise means and what form means. Uh, and it, we can think about what that uh, might look like as we start to build something. Okay, so we can leave this puppy up and running. Let's add another container. And we'll call this one Project 2. In our uh, layout, we know that we want it to be 1280 by 720. Maybe you don't want it to be that big. I want to make mine that big. And I'm going to set my panel. Uh, the background top is going to be BG inside here, because I know that at some point that's how I'm going to label it inside of this. All right, so let's dive in here and take a look at how we could get started with exploring this idea. So central to this, and I should point out one more time that if we take a look here, again, uh, at this generative design page here on the derivative wiki, that sure enough, what we're actually looking at is this guy right here. And I would encourage you to actually go uh, download the whole um, file pack, right? You can find it, it should be up here at the top. You can grab the code right there. So I would download this whole thing and then take a closer look at um, what Marcus has done in creating a bunch of these and his explorations of them. Uh, and hopefully what we learn and what we talk about will be a, a way to understand a part of what's happening inside of this. Cool. Okay. Let's actually do some programming. So here in our network, uh, we're going to start by adding a circle SOP. Sure enough, we're back to our good old from the circle. So we're going to start off here. We're going to leave this as a polygon. We're going to make sure this has 300 divisions this time around. We're going to give it a radius of uh, not 0.8. And then right away, one of the first things that we need to do is we actually need to convert this uh, into channel data. So we're going to go ahead and convert this, bada bing, bada boom, uh, into a, set of, a series of chops or into a, uh, a chop for us, right, with some channels. And uh, we need to make one other thing. So really what we're exploring here is we're exploring a bunch of instancing. And we've talked about instancing before. So we're really prepping ourselves for how we're going to deal with instancing uh, when we start to actually draw some geometry. So I'm also going to add a noise chop. And this noise chop is going to have two channels in it. It's going to have TX and TY. I'm going to go ahead and set this to have the, a matching number of samples as what's going on here in my SOP2. So I can do that in the channel, excuse me, no, that's right, in the channel page. I'm going to set, um, my start can still be at zero, my end, I'm going to change this to be samples, is actually how I want to measure this. So I'm going to look at the operator called SOP21, and I'm going to look for the, num, the number of samples, num samples. That uh, returns 300. Now, if I look at this, this actually means I have 301 samples. And I look down here, right? So that's 300 samples. So I need to actually just go ahead and subtract 1 from this. So now I start at 0, I go to 299, which means I have 300 samples, which matches 300 samples here in my SOP2. Perfect. Let's go ahead and switch our noise here from being, uh, instead of sparse, let's use totally random noise. Excellent. And then we're going to use a cross chop. And we're going to go ahead and plug both of these into our cross chop. Bada bing, bada boom. So the cross chop will allow us to cross fade between these two channels, right? Zero to one, we can see how we're moving between those. That's really helpful and excellent. We're going to take advantage of that in a huge way. Let's go ahead and add this to a math, because we're going to need to do some scaling at some point. Don't you worry. 
And let's actually end this in a null, so we're ready to actually uh, work with this over in our rendering situation. So we're going to add another circle here to our network. Lovely. We're going to go ahead and set this up to render, so we'll plug this into a geometry. We're going to need a camera. We can again rely on using a constant material, which means that we don't need a light in this particular setup. Excellent. Let's render this with a render top. And we are getting close. So here for our geo, let's in our instance page, let's turn on instancing. We can use null 1, tx, ty. Now, given uh, a bunch of the qualities of what's going on here, this is just like a hot mess, right? Which is actually just as it should be right now. There's, uh, we're drawing a whole bunch of stuff all on top of uh, one another, which is uh, how we're ending up with all these conflicts, and that's uh, for us, totally copacetic, because we still need to make some changes. So the first change we're going to do is we're going to head up here to our camera, and we're going to switch our view. And instead of perspective, we're going to switch to being orthographic. Uh, and while we're here, we're going to change our ortho width from being 2 all the, the way up to 1920. So it's going to be wide, wide, wide. So now all of a sudden we see that we're We've got a really small kind of picture of what's going on here. And all everything is really kind of rendered right in that single dot. Bleh. Oh dear, we still need to do some more changes. That's okay. Let's head over to our math. And in our range of negative 1 to 1, let's go ahead and then switch this to be negative 512 to 512. And if we come and take a look over here now, okay, whew, things are getting better for us. We can kind of start to see the star field kind of situation happening. In our geo, let's go ahead and crank our uniform scale up to 3. I'm going to attach this to a null. Right, I'm just thinking ahead. We're going to attach it to a null. We'll call it BG. And then I'm going to view this guy. OK. So this is looking pretty, uh, pretty good. We're making good, solid progress. And really, uh, the kind of meat and potatoes of what we're after is now already built. If we take a look at our cross and we run our cross from 0 to 1, we can see that we are changing the position of our instances from being in this uh, perfect assortment, right, which happens to match what's going on here over in our circle, this chop, to our absolutely random distribution of points. And because these two things match in their length, it uh, allows us to really seamlessly move between the two of these, which is super fun. OK. So let's think about how we might animate this. So uh, we could use like an LFO. So let's grab an LFO. Let's attach it to a math, because we're probably going to want to scale. We could even then attach it to a null also, because who knows, we might change our minds in terms of uh, how we're actually doing any operations here. Let's grab this, use it to drive, not our math, but our cross. Whew, not totally what I want yet. I probably want something more like Gaussian. I want that frequency to be a little bit slower, maybe 0 0.25. OK. That's looking much better. I don't want to go all the way to either end, so I think what I want to do is this 0 to 1 range. I want to start maybe at like not 0.1, and I want to go uh, as high as not 0.95. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. I might even go to not 0.99. Yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. So now we've got this kind of slowly uh, bouncing kind of thing happening here. And let's make this even slower. Okay. I like it. So we might think uh, next about how do we get this to move a little bit. <laughs> So we can't do that with our geometry, right? Um, because this is actually only the instance. So we'd just be spinning one of these circles, which is not what we want. 
We could do it over here in our circle, right? We could actually uh, use a transform SOP and transform this. Um, and uh, I'm on the fence about that, right? Depending on the complexity of our network, that might cost us more resources than we want, depending on how complex things were. We could do this in our camera, and in fact, that's the way we're going to try it here today. So in the uh, rotate Z position, let's abs time dot seconds. And that's like just a little bit too slow. Frame is going to be too fast, but we can multiply frame by maybe not 0.2. All right. So the one thing I'm noticing is that when we get to one end of this LFO, we can still see pretty closely how this is kind of like a square, right? The uniform distribution here. So let's, uh, here in this math, on math 2, let's crank this to maybe like 0 0.3. Ooh, even higher, maybe 0 0.4. So we still have got a nice kind of messy distribution, but it doesn't feel quite so square to me. 0.5 maybe even. Yeah, that's much better, I think. As we continue to experiment with this, we might think about, well, uh, how do we start to work with how this looks and what this means, right? So we could also start to think about uh, things like feedback. So we could create a, a simple little feedback system here. Let's use a composite at the end of this. So we'll composite together these guys. Don't forget that in our multiply, we need something like add. Woohoo! All right. So, this is moving in an interesting direction. We might also think about turning down some of our alpha here. Let's clear out our feedback. Right? We need like way less alpha. And now we've got these really wispy kind of things. That are a totally different kind of beast altogether, right? We could even turn this alpha way, way down. And now we have something that draws in over time uh, that's got a much different kind of quality and characteristic to it. We could also think instead about, uh, rather than just drawing this one thing like this, right? Maybe what we want to do is we want to leave our alpha a little bit higher, maybe like 0.25. And instead, we want to insert a level top. We could use our level here to turn down our opacity. And in our pre, we could turn the black level up just a skosh. Let's reset our feedback. There we go. And now we've got these kind of nice long trails. Uh, we probably need to go more like 0 point or 0 0.01. Yeah. Now this gives us um, something that's got a pretty hard edge to it, right? We could think about if we want... Um, these to have a little more of a glowing quality to them, right? If that's really what I'm after, let's uh, make a little room here in our network. And we could instead add a blur. And this will give us a nice soft edge. This gives us a much more wispy kind of quality to what's going on here. If we view that, we can see these kind of wispy particles that are zooming around. And in our bl blur, we might crank down that blur just a little bit. So it's more like, yeah. So now we have something that's really kind of wispy and dancy. So that's another thing that we might explore. We could play with all sorts of different elements in terms of uh, our instancing and how we're actually coming up with some of these uh, different elements here, uh, right? So we could play with color, certainly, if we wanted to. Uh, we know how uh, in our instance uh, we could think about 
uh, in instance 2, we could specify the RGBA values uh, based on uh, how we wanted to replace or how we wanted to build in some of that here. Um, right, so we could, we would just have to uh, do a little more noise, make some noise, watch out. And we could use brackets for that, RGB. We need to make a little more space. We're going to need to merge all of this together. We need our noise to match, of course, the number of channels. So we also need to come in here to channel. And we're going to end in samples. We're going to use the same technique we used before. Look for the operator, whose name is SOP21. And we'll use uh, num samples, minus 1. Excellent. We should be able to come then over here, R, G, B. And now we've got a whole chunk of noise here for our particles. We might want to come to our noise, and instead of using this sparse noise, if we use totally random noise, now we're going to get a much more psychedelic distribution of what's going on here in our color, right? This is pretty muted because we've turned the alpha way down, but we could turn our alpha up a little bit, and we've got this kind of like rainbow confetti situation happening, which is pretty all right. That's not terrible. I'm happy with that so far. Maybe instead of uh, this kind of jamboree situation, we want something again that follows uh, some of the conventions of our gradient. So a way to think about how we do that, right, would be let's go ahead and make a ramp. Oops. Let's set this to be horizontal. We're going to go 0 to 299. Oops, excuse me, 299 by 1. So that should mean that our resulting ramp is going to be uh, 300 samples long. We'll confirm that here in one second. Um, but while we're at it, let's go ahead and add some ramp keys. So let's change our saturation here. And let's crank up our saturation and our value. And let's maybe do like an orangey kind of gradient here. So we've got orange. We'll use the same key here at the end. We'll do kind of a blue here in the middle. Great. Let's go ahead and turn this into uh, top information. Let's examine this. So this is 299 samples. Excellent. Let's verify that's correct. Oh, 300 samples. So we're one sample short. Okay, great. Let's fix that. So we want 300 pixels. Excellent. So we've got uh, 300 samples inside of this. We can see how they're distributed here. Let's go ahead and we can use this technique. We can drop in a null. And then we can actually just yoink, use that to substitute our way in there. So now we're using this ramp to fill in the color values for what's going on here in our dots. Let's use our composite method and let's switch this to be maybe like over instead of add. And we can see that show up a little bit better. And with over, we can crank up our alpha a little bit more. 
so we're a little closer to our true color. So we can see that actual ramp. And I'll pause it here when we get all the way out. So now we can actually see our gradient here, right? Blue, orange, back to blue. And then we can see those particles kind of move, what their distribution becomes, and then where they go back to. We could also, right, there's uh, no rules here. We could animate our ramp, so we could still continue to push uh, the period of it, left or right, oops, excuse me, not the period, the phase. So we could move that through our samples. And that, again, seconds is probably like a little bit too slow. But frame, Uh, there we go, we can see that moving there. Maybe we need to go just like a little bit slower time, 0 0.5. So our gradient's actually moving at the same time that the camera's moving. There's all sorts of movement in here as a way of kind of tricking our eye into seeing more complexity than what's actually going on. If we were to bypass our movement for a second, we could actually see how our gradient is moving on our particles. And we could, in fact, in our cross, let's go ahead and for a hot second, we'll stop it. Right? I'm just going to switch here. And we can see how the gradient is actually animating around. Maybe we want that to go even slower. So we can see that our gradient's moving. The way that we're uh, set up is that then our the position of our instances is also in flux. So there's another kind of movement that's tricking our eye here in terms of seeing a lot of transition. And then if we turn on our camera movement, then we've also got this kind of swirling action that's happening. So there are lots of things that are going on here. And in fact, if we wanted to be really crazy, uh, we could add another feedback network after this. So we could feedback again. And this time we could transform instead. Let's add another composite. composite these two together. Let's use over one more time. That's handy. All right. And in our transform, what we're going to do is we're going to use our scale to scale down. So now we've got this kind of tunnel kind of effect. In fact, we might need to scale down even more. And we could rotate a little bit. So there's all sorts of offsets in this kind of tunnel of particle-y stuff. So uh, there's a little bit of something playful in terms of thinking about how we work with this and also what this means and looks like. Right? This gives us a bunch of different options in terms of what it is that we're making and how we can explore what those things mean or look like. And in fact, if we go ahead and uh, bounce here up to the top, we can see that here are two examples up and running. So those are the two things we looked at here in class today. Um, and hopefully, uh, those spark some of your ideas, because the next uh, next on our list is for us to start to think about and talk about what it means uh, in terms of the kinds of projects that you want to do. What's the thing that you want to make for the end of the course, right? We've learned a lot of different kind of component building pieces along the way. And now the big questions are going to be for you in terms of what is it that you want to build and what is it that you want to make. All right, looking forward to see what you make in class, and I cannot wait.